Now, when you're working with springs, you never want to use something like a needle nose plier because it has uh, serrated jaws. And if you put a nick in the spring, you've created a stress riser and the spring could break. I know two people who have installed uh, aftermarket springs and had them break because they installed them with pliers. One was the uh, uh, torsion spring like this one and the other one was a standard spring, an extension spring. So you always want to use something that is hooked. Using your hook, you pull the spring towards you this way so that it comes off the doohickey a little bit. Pull it down towards the slot and uh, you can use something to push on the back of it and get it close to the slot and push it in and it's there. And the last thing you want to make sure to do is take, take the spring and push it all the way back towards the inner case. There, all done. Next up is to put the rotor on and put the gears on and get all that set up. So we'll be back in a second. Installing the rotor is fairly straightforward. I don't know if I mentioned these two spacers uh, or thrust washers, but they go on the shaft. There are two of them. You want to wipe down the shaft and make sure it's clean and dry. And this key needs to be properly positioned. Uh, you want it to have it fairly level with the tapered surface. And if it needs to rock, it will rock of its own accord when you install the rotor. It's handy to take this thing out and put with a center punch a little dimple in the side. And that will help, uh, help it stay in the slot and then wipe the inside of the rotor. Uh, you want to make sure you've got any grit and blood and stuff like that out of there. And um, wipe the inside taper of the rotor as well. And then it's ready to go on. Uh, this, when you took it apart, this clutch may have come out. Uh, if it did, put it on first and then slide the uh, you can put it on first and then slide the rotor over it, or you can assemble them and put it in together. I like to put it in together. Now, with the uh, keyway at the top dead center here, you can find the top dead center mark, the, the lazy T, and that makes it pretty easy to line up the keyway and the key. And so just gently feel it on there and put it in, okay? And then we can wipe away any grease from the face here and we're ready to install the rotor bolt. The rotor bolt is something that I believe you should replace every time. In reading the manual, I don't find where it specifically says that. I noticed uh, on the manual, in the manual at the exploded parts diagram where it has a call out of R for replacement parts, but then the rotor bolt itself is not listed as a replacement part. I think it's just good practice though. And uh, they're not that expensive and hopefully you only do this once in your life. So I would go ahead and put a new bolt in there. And then there is a specified tightening sequence. So we'll get to that. Now, if your crank didn't happen to be at top dead center like mine was, all you need to do is line the T up with wherever the keyway is, and you'll, you'll find it very quickly slides on. Now, the tightening sequence is that we install the rotor bolt, torque it to 15 foot-pounds, then remove it, clean it with uh, a solvent, and then reinstall it and torque it to the final in the case of a Gen 2, it's 144 foot-pounds. I think it was less on the Gen 1s, and no, I don't know why. What I like to do is take the old rotor bolt and wipe it down very good, get it good and clean, and use that rotor bolt to set the initial torque, and then put the new rotor bolt in because it comes out of the package clean and dry. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to... And what I'm going to do is just tighten it on there a little bit so that I can rotate the uh, 
rotor around to crank around as I brace the the wrench and that way the having the bolt in there make sure the uh, rotor doesn't fall off. I'm working with a camera in my way so things got a little bit cumbersome and in order to position the uh, the wrench underneath to brace the uh, things I had to do that off camera but we're ready to do the initial torque of 15 foot-pounds there we go and uh, now what we'll do is pop that back out and go get the new bolt Here's our genuine Kawasaki part. Now we're ready for the final torque, which is a big grunt. So uh, we'll start it. And uh, this is where it's good to have a buddy because it helps to be able to brace things. So that you don't knock the bike over and all that sort of stuff. I am almost there. One more. Okay, Woo. when you pull the side cover off to look at your doohickey, this is the view that you'll have. And from this, you ought to be able to determine whether or not your installed doohickey is a stock doohickey or an aftermarket doohickey, simply based on surface finish. I'm ready to put the gears in now. They want you to put a little moly disulfide on the shafts of the torque limiter here. So I've done that. I've got my two thrust washers and then this goes in big gear to the inside and it mates with the shaft on the starter motor. And next comes the mating gear set and this needs to have engine oil stuck on the bearings that go in the middle here. So I'm going to put a dab of motor oil on those. And then we'll get the shaft and put it through. And then my thrust washer goes on the back. Or excuse me, that's actually the front. And the other thrust washer goes on the back. And it goes in and mates with that outer gear. And sometimes this is a little bit of a tricky thing. You've got to move the gear in the back. It turns this way freely. It locks up that way. So move it a little that way and it'll, it'll all come together. Okay. At this point, we're ready to put the gasket on. So I'm going to hang my gasket. My gasket's in place and the only thing left is to put a little dab of silicone sealant on these two gaskets that uh, actually it's a grommet for the for the stator wires and now it is ready to snap in place uh, let me look everything over one quick time make sure I've got it all I do believe I do okay now this because of the magnet and everything this will kind of snap in place 
So you need to be kind of careful when you're offering it up. See what I mean? There. Okay. Now let's see. The gasket is sitting good. A little tap. All seems to be good. I will now put the bolts in. And I'm getting real close to being as happy as a seagull with a french fry. There's the last one. The only thing left to do is uh, do a little doohickey adjustment. The first one, just to make sure everything is copacetic. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I've been working on this for about four hours now. And that includes mistakes and retakes and uh, false steps with the video and everything. So you really shouldn't find it too hard to do and too time consuming. Um, and I hope this video has been somewhat helpful to you. Maybe I pointed out a couple of things that will make your life easier. So I'm going to put those plugs back in and go for a ride. Safe travels. Bye.